My name is Anderson Pleasance. What is it that gives our names a sense of identity? I don't know most of your names, but I do know that everyone in this room is unique and has their own sense of purpose and potential, even if it hasn't been fully realized yet. I know what it's like to lose hope, self-worth, and sense of direction in life. I'm a firm believer that the best way to find solutions, help others, and bridge understanding is to share our stories, to show others they aren't alone. So here's a sliver of my story, how I found hope by finding myself, and in the process found a way to impact so many others around the world. I'm different. Let's address the elephant in the room. Yeah, I look different, but I want to talk, or actually sign, rather, about what I've been doing with my hands. The way I communicate is a major, wonderful part of who I am that I'm proud of, but it also has its challenges. I hope you've realized by this point, I'm not just doing extensive arm and hand exercises. I can't speak, so I'm nonverbal, and I communicate with American Sign Language, or ASL. As a deaf performer, I interpret music in ASL, like the cover I'll be doing of Whatever It Takes by Imagine Dragons. Interpreting music was the beginning of my realization of self. I've always had my identity at my core. But it wasn't until Andy Signs became an integral part of who I am that my sense of identity evolved, allowing me to grow as a person and see hope for myself, that I was more than just someone who had challenges and looked different. Ever since I was about six months old, sign language has been a major part of my identity. I'm deaf hard of hearing, which means I can hear with my hearing aids on, but without them, I'm profoundly deaf. Unless you're my incredibly loud sister, McLean. <laughs> the deaf I call myself is with a capital D, as opposed to lowercase d. And that's culturally crucial to my identity. It's capital D because I don't see my deafness as something that weakens or limits my life. Far from it. Deaf culture is a community centered around sign language and pride. To us, it's not a loss of sense, but a sense of self. I still use hard of hearing because I consider myself part of both worlds, the deaf world and the hearing world. Communication has always been an issue for me. I've been in mainstream schools for years, so almost everyone I knew didn't know sign language. And no one could understand my so-called speech. Ironically, I've sometimes been told that when I swear vocally, it's surprisingly easy to understand. <laughs> my main method of speaking to other kids is to just type it out on my phone and show it to the other person. But there's no emotion in words on a screen. It's also not nearly fast nor fluid enough. It's difficult, and I often fall behind in conversations, leaving a lot unsaid. My personality is an outgoing, sarcastic, and fun-loving one. So it pained me to mostly be a passive, quiet observer. It was pure torture. I wanted to express myself, share my jokes, and make others laugh, engage in stimulating intellectual debates. I always thought that surely if people could just read my mind and hear my inner voice, then surely they'd like me for who I am. I think my Tumblr-obsessed 14-year-old self put it best. I'm not voiceless. You just choose not to see. Hearing people talk, which means I got to try and actually hear correctly. And deaf makes it a bit tricky. I want you all to imagine you're six years old and your mother comes downstairs 
with a surprise message for you. Now imagine the mixture of excitement, terror, and confusion when you, the small six-year-old, hear your mother say, Hey Andy, I got you some new bed sheep. <laughs> new sheep? Woman, I don't even know how to wipe my butt yet, much less take care of another living thing. Now, imagine the horror and confusion multiplied because at the time you also have a massive phobia of pretty much every animal on the planet. <laughs> another story for another day. Shockingly, there is no species of sheep that's miniaturized and can only live on your bed like I was imagining at six years old. They were actually, of course, new bed sheets. There are some parts of me that I was born with. That's out of my control. There was a time when I hated myself and wished so badly to be normal, just so I could easily be who I wanted to be. I figured the only thing holding me back was the fact that I couldn't talk and I look different. But by avoiding mirrors and cursing my luck, I was preventing myself from finding hope and happiness. I will always be who I am. This face, as handsome as it may be, isn't a mask for sale at Party City. I have golden heart syndrome. I'm happy with how I look. It's how I was born. I'm also thankful for the craniofacial community full of kids who I saw myself in and adults who are all so accepting. It wasn't easy. I went through years of being stared at, pointing, and rude questions, even from adults. Four years ago, I became extremely depressed with suicidal thoughts because of how isolated I felt due to all of the societal barriers constantly orbiting around me. I felt so alone in the world, one in which I never saw anyone who looked like me nor had the same challenges finding success in a society so judgmental. I, ne I never had that kind of role model to show me the way to live as someone like me. I didn't think I stood a chance in this world. But one morning, I started to give myself a chance. I woke up, got out of bed, moved my desk, and stacked a bunch of boxes and books, angled my phone on it just right, and I pressed record as I signed the song, Waiting on the World to Change by John Mayer. It was so therapeutic to just express the emotions and deeper concepts of this song in my language, singing in American Sign Language, showcasing the wide array of emotions and deep thought that's been inside me and left unspoken. My whole transition from isolation to pride and hope that has all been possible because of my YouTube channel, Andy Signs. My videos started out only as ASL covers of songs, and within two to four years, Andy saw, and in two to four minutes, I felt freer than I've ever felt. I was able to scream, cry, exclaim, and even rap. Andy Signs was born out of a need. I needed to do these videos to help myself cope and, f and feel. And it helped me to sow connections with tens of thousands of others around the globe. It transformed from a coping tool for one to a community of shared positivity and the spreading of awareness and understanding. My videos represent who I am. I touch on deaf culture life with a craniofacial difference, mental health, and so much more. I finally found a way to chip away at those communication barriers while I sign and vocalize with closed captioning 
My videos range from my performance with Grammy-winning duo 21 Pilots to yelling at Siri for not understanding me to opening up about my experiences and thoughts. Through it all, my personality is always on full display. This platform has allowed me to see my challenges or barriers in a new light and turn them into strengths that empower me. It's why I'm now so much more comfortable with sharing these lesser known perspectives that exist within the diverse spectrum of identities and stories that make up humanity. Through my self-acceptance, I found a new passion and drive in life. I want to be a role model from whom kids like me can learn love and confidence. Someone they can definitively point to and say, he's like me, he gets it, I'm not alone. That's why I make my videos, why I showcase myself and share my story. There's a stigma against those who look different, that we're somehow inferior. My goal is to shift that thinking, not just for me, but for all the kids out there who struggle to find acceptance. Andy Signs is part of who I am, my identity as a person. In psychology, there's something called self-complexity. It's this idea of human identity as being the sum of multiple identities that make up who you are. For example, the identity of being a brother, son, friend, artist, student, etc. The more identities you possess, the higher your self-complexity. And the higher your self-complexity, the more supports you have to lean on when you're feeling lost. I know there are many out there in the world who are uncomfortable with the idea of labels. They feel labels can be restricting. And I completely agree with that statement, except I drop just one letter from that statement. A label can be restricting. But multiple labels can be quite liberating, eye-opening, and connect you even more with yourself and humanity. All of these labels or identities have a sense of community or second family. People united in pride for themselves and each other. The more identities you possess, the more opportunities you have to meet with people with different stories and perspectives. By simply being myself, after tossing aside the fears cultivated by society that held me back, I was energized and motivated to find more identities that I could draw from myself, and with those identities came their respective communities. I even gained the confidence and self-love to think about myself romantically. Now I'm a proud member of the LGBTQ plus community and I found a deeper sense of understanding of myself by accepting and being proud to be bisexual. The whole time I've been describing my own self complexity which helped me recognize my potential in this world. I'm Anderson Pleasance, also Andy for short. I'm a son, a brother, a friend. I'm also deaf, hard of hearing, nonverbal, disabled, a deaf performer, a YouTuber, no, 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 not the Logan Paul kind, an activist, bisexual, music lover, and more I will discover as I grow. Golden Har Syndrome will forever be part of my identity through good and bad days. I am someone with a craniofacial difference and by opening up and embracing that, I've learned to love and accept myself so that others can love and accept me too. A few weeks ago, I was admittedly half paying attention in my English class, reading Shakespeare's Hamlet, 
And then my hearing aids picked up this quote from my teacher. To thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. Polonius from Hamlet. What I took from this line was that if you're true to yourself and you carry yourself with the pride of who you are, it will have a positive impact on you and those around you. Everyone surrounding you is different from you and each other. We are all unique with parts of our physical and inner identity that help give us definition. Don't be afraid to accept what can be a positive component of your identity. I'm going to keep driving home the point that no matter what your differences are, be proud of them. Do not let society's views control your life's narratives. We must normalize different, just as much as we've normalized whatever normal is. At the end of this conference, when you all go back into the world, or for those of you watching online when this video ends, I ask that you please keep an open mind. If you meet someone different from your usual expectations of life, get to know them. But don't befriend them just because they're different. I'm not recommending you be a fake friend because I've had my fair share of those. Rather, simply get to know someone and carry yourself with the knowledge that there is more to everyone than just their name or face. We all have our deeper layers that make up who we are. This is a call to action that will last your entire life. So I'd like to ask that you remember this advice for the rest of your life too. Love yourself and you will find yourself.